Hey everybody, Steve here. So, it's official. It looks like Make Music has decided to discontinue Finale forever after more than 35 years on the market. When I first heard this, I was devastated. I mean, I've been using Finale professionally for almost 20 years now, and in that time it's become essential to everything I do in the music industry, from education to production to composition and arranging, of course. But it looks like uh, I don't have much of a choice. I'm going to have to move on and find a new program. And I thought maybe a good way to go about doing that would be to make a series of videos kind of comparing all the other options out there to Finale in the hopes that maybe it can help someone else out who's in the same boat as me. So that's what we're here to do. So this is going to be a whole series of short videos comparing some of the other options out there to Finale, most of which I've never used and some of them I've never even heard of. But I'm hoping to compare some of the strengths of these other programs to Finale and see maybe what they do better, what they do worse. And who knows, maybe I've been using the wrong program for years. That is totally possible. In this video specifically, I'm going to lay out what I expect from a notation program uh, along with a method that I devised to help poke at the strengths and weaknesses of these types of programs and see what would suit me personally. And the key word there is personal. What I need from a program like this might not be what you need, but I will try and point that out along the way. So over the last few years, I've been hearing that we're currently in a golden age for music industry related software. And I didn't realize how true that was until I started looking around for alternatives to Finale. There are so many notation programs out there right now that it made my head spin. I couldn't believe it. One thing I was aware of though, was the multitude of current options when it comes to music production. I mean, I've been using Pro Tools and Logic for God knows how long now, but I have a lot of clients and collaborators making some amazing stuff on programs that I didn't even know existed a couple years ago. I've even seen some promo clips of the new version of Audacity coming out, and wow, if that stays as a free option, it looks like it might be a serious contender for one of the better programs out there. I've used Audacity a little bit in the past, but but I've never really been able to mix or compose on it before just due to its sort of outdated and limited interface. But I would still say it's one of the best audio conversion tools available uh, online. So we'll have to wait and see what they do with this new version, but I'm looking forward to it. In any case, it seems like music notation has finally caught up to music production in regards to the amount of fabulous software options out there, which is actually really exciting, I think. Okay, so far I've identified nine programs that look like they can be used for music notation in a professional setting. I'm gonna try out all of them along with maybe a couple other little surprises I found that look kind of interesting to me. If there's anything else I might have missed, please let me know uh, either in the comments or send me a message on Instagram and I will definitely take a look as well. So with any type of professional software, its usefulness to you is really going to come down to what you hope to accomplish with it. And music software is no different. For musicians and composers, arrangers, I think the right software for somebody would come down to a few different factors. The first one would be the user's knowledge and familiarity with technology and computers in general. Number two would be knowledge and familiarity with music theory. Number three would be knowledge of standard arranging techniques. So this would be more technical stuff like formatting a score, instrument parts, the difference between jazz and classical arranging, things like that. But for me personally, the most important factor would be number four, adaptability, meaning the ability for a program to allow me both to throw a quick jazz chart together or get really into the details with a full big band arrangement, something like that. A really good example of trying to use a good piece of software for the wrong job would be Guitar Pro. As a guitar player myself, I have used it, and for what it's intended to do, it definitely works pretty well. But the idea of trying to do a full big band chart using this interface gives me nightmares just thinking about it. So with all this in mind, I put together a list of a few tasks I'm going to try to accomplish in each of these programs and then rate each program based on how easy that task was to do and how happy I was with the final result. So for example, if I was able to complete one of these tasks really easily, but I just wasn't happy with the final product, how it looked on the page, that program might lose some functionality for me. And again, these are just my personal opinions. You may disagree with me and that's totally fine. And I mean no ill will to any of the great teams that put all this software together. Number one, I'm gonna see how easy it is to throw together a basic jazz 32 bar AABA lead sheet, something like this. 
To do this, I'm gonna be using one of my favorite rhythm changes songs of all time, John Schofield's upbeat and delightful song, We. I picked this tune because the melody is simple enough, but it's also really rhythmic and precise so we can see how easy or difficult it is to add notes and rests and a few other details like that. It also has the usual improv B section in a rhythm changes tune, so we can make use of some of the alternative notations as well. The second task is going to be a solo transcription, something similar in form to the first task here, but with a lot more detail and complexity. This is to try and see how these programs handle more complex rhythms and decorative notation. For this, I've chosen this great transcription of Paul Desmond's solo on Louis Bonfa's Samba d'Orfeu, which has a lot more complex 16th note rhythms and some cool chords and ornamentations. And finally, I'm gonna try and transcribe 16 bars or so of a full big band chart with four trumpets, five saxophones, four trombones, a full rhythm section, and vocals as well. For this job, I have picked the first little bit of Brian Setzer's amazing song, Hoodoo Voodoo Doll, which is sort of in the middle when it comes to arrangement difficulty, which makes it a good candidate for this, I think. And make no mistake, once this is all over, the program that I think suited me personally the best is going to become the new program that I do everything in. I don't really have another choice at this point. So yeah, uh, wish me luck and see you soon.